Hello everyone, welcome back to Xcoding with Alvian. In this video, we are going to learn and have a hands-on with Doxy to create rich documentation for a Swift package. Doxy is an open source framework released by Apple last year at WWDC 2021. It is initially available to public alongside the release of Swift 5.5 and Xcode 13. With Doxy, we can produce rich API reference documentation and interactive tutorial for Swift framework or package. It can convert markdown text with cross symbol linking into rich documentation that can be displayed right in Xcode documentation window or host it to a website. To learn more about Doxy in depth, I have provided the links to the official documentation website which is also built with Doxy. And I have also provided the relevant WWDC videos for you to watch after you completed this hands-on tutorial. Let me show you the demo of the final project that will code along. So here in my web browser, I already opened this GitHub page for this specific repository containing this XCRTMDB client framework. This is alfianlosari.github.io. This is my GitHub username. And this is the main page containing the summary and overview of the framework. In the summary, it shows that we can get the latest movie updates and information from TMDB API. The overview provides more information and context about using this framework, as well as main components such as the movie model here and the movie store service. It also has support to render image within the documentation itself. Scrolling down, I can see all the main topics for using this framework. And here in the essential section, there are two articles. First one is getting started with movie store to fetch and search movie from TMDB API. And second one is displaying movie UI with provided Swift UI views. Let me click on the getting started with movie store to open the article. This page is an article that we can use to document any relevant information to the users of this framework. This article provides the documentation on how to initialize and use movie store APIs to fetch and search movies. It supports rendering of code block in the documentation so that the user can copy and paste this to their code. With symbol linking, we can reference any type, property, and method within the documentation. And when we click, it will directly navigate to the actual documentation of its type. Let me click on the movie store to navigate and see all the public APIs. Here, it lists all the public initializer and instance methods. So let me click on one of the methods here. We can see the summary, the parameters, and return value of the related method. Now let me click on the movie struct model to open it in detail. Here we have all the public instance properties with their summary from this model, from the cast, ID, overview, rating text, and so on. Okay. Now let me show you one other cool thing about this. So by sharing this generated doc archive and open it in macOS with Xcode installed, with it will open this Xcode documentation window as you can see. This is rendered just like the other Apple frameworks such as AppKit, CVUI, or UIKit, nice right? We can also navigate easily using the sidebar on the left. It also has one advantage compared to the website version currently, which is this search bar. So we can basically just type anything to quickly search. As you can see here, movie, representation of a movie, SNMD client, and this movie, this is an instance property of the movie backdrop view. We haven't added the description to this one. And let me show you one other cool feature. Let me open this displaying movie UI 
display movie in UI with provided CV UI views. So here it renders this image of the movie poster and backdrop using the dark theme. And let me try to change my theme to light. Nice. The image got updated with the light theme. This is amazing, right? Let me turn back to dark. And that's it for the demo. That's all the things that we are going to build in this tutorial. Before we begin, let me show you all the topics that we are going to learn and implement. First, create a Swift library using Swift Package Manager. Add document annotation to the source code for type, initializer, property, and method. Next, create documentation catalog. Create framework main page and learn how to use symbol linking. Create articles page. Create topic section and learn how to use document linking. And next, add image with dynamic dark mode support to documentation catalog. And next, generate doc archive file using Xcode build with command line. And use Xcode 13.3 doxy to generate static hosting files for GitHub pages. And next, create GitHub pages for a repository. And finally, upload the static hosting files to the GitHub repo. Before you start, make sure to download the starter project from the GitHub repository link that I have provided. It contains all the source files that we'll be using to create Swift package as well as the image assets. The source file itself is based on the building TMDB app tutorial that I have provided in the link for you to watch if you haven't. And I don't include the entire application, only the surface models and two CVOI views. So this framework is lightweight and can be added as dependency by any other app using SPM. The minimum requirement is to have Xcode 13 installed, but for generating static hosting files, you will need to download Xcode 13.3 beta. As Apple added the static set hosting support only from C5.6 and Doxy library that is included in Xcode 13.3. All the source code for the completed project can be found in the repository as well. You can also access the GitHub pages for the repo to see documentation by yourself. I also included the doxy archive file which you can simply open in Xcode. Okay, now let's get started to code along. Okay, so I have opened my Xcode 13.3 here. And first let's create a new Swift package. So select this file from the menu bar and select new and select package. For the name, I'm going to give the name of xktmdb client. I'm going to save this inside my desktop folder. Create. Okay, this will generate the package.swift file with one target here, xktmdb client. And let's open the package.swift. So this is the file that we use to organize our package, such as adding target, add other Swift dependencies here, and so many more. Now let's add the supported platforms required to build this package. So after the name, we need to add an original parameter here, platforms. So basically we need to pass an array of supported platform type. Okay. So for our product, we are going to only support Apple platforms. Uh, because I'm using the utilization data task async await that is only available on Apple platforms as well as the async image for CVUI. Okay, so iOS, the first one, version 15. Okay, and macOS, version 12, Monterey, watchOS, version 8. And TV TVOS version 15. Okay, these are all the Apple platforms that we're going to support. 
and let's try to change this scheme here to i113 and try to build okay the build succeeded let me maximize this window to full screen let's, let's copy all the source files from the starter project that you have downloaded so but basically where should we put it into if you see on the project navigator we have this sources folder containing the xatmdb client folder so this is basically where should we put all the code and all the sources okay now let's open the starter folder and click on this src folder and select everything command a and drag this to this xca the mdb client folder in our package okay it added all the source code now and we can remove this xcitmdb client.swift as we are not going to use this as well as this xcitmdb client test.swift file okay so select this and this and just delete them okay now change again to iphone 13 i simulator build it again okay the build succeeded now let's build documentation using xcode 13 so select product from the menu bar and click build documentation okay so here at the sidebar click on this xcitmdb client and basically the process is xcode will build the source code the swift source code and create the symbol graphs for all the types and generate the docs file and automatically open it in this xcode documentation window so at the sidebar we can see xcitmdb client is under the workspace documentation and currently it is empty right there is nothing in here this is because all the classes structs enums protocols properties and methods have internal access modifier Doxy will only generate the documentation for any type with public access modifier, which is very logical, as we only want to expose the documentation for the public API we intended our users to use. Let's begin by working on the models first. Let's navigate back to the Xcode project here, and let's open the movie.swift file. First, let's make the movie struct public. And also, let's make this extension as well public. Okay. For the properties, let's add public to the ID, title, and overview. ID, title, and overview. I won't be adding everything as public to save our time for this tutorial. So you can add or modify anything you want later after you understand the whole process. Now let's build documentation again. Okay, nice. We have the movie model in the documentation. Let's click on it. And yes, it has the associated public instance property here. The ID, overview, and title also it says that it conforms to the equitable hashable and identifiable protocols nice so currently we don't have any summary and overview for this movie model and each of the instance property also doesn't have any description so next let's add the annotation to show this from the source code itself now get back to the movie.swift file so to add annotation for type we can use triple slashes like so the first line is always the short summary let me type representation of a movie okay and the following lines that we add will be the overview it supports multiple paragraphs as well as adding inline code block let me type model 
provides information for a movie such as for for referencing any type in our code such as instance property class method and anything else we can use the symbol linking using this double tick and export will give us recommendation and auto completion let me use the title here and overview instance properties okay now let's try to build this okay nice we have this short summary rendered and as well as the overview paragraph okay let's go back so other than using these triple slashes there is another alternative that i prefer so we can also use this double asterisk okay so with this we don't have to add annotation for each line basically this we can add anything here so let me copy this okay representation of a movie as well as this one and let me remove all the triple slashes okay and let's add another paragraph i think this is the proper way of formatting this okay let's add another paragraph and let's start example of showing movie title and overview using cfui okay and basically to create it line in line code block we can wrap the code in between triple tick like so and after the opening tick i'm going to type swift here and basically with this the doxy compiler will use the swift syntax formatting when rendering the doc it also supports many other programming language as well okay now let me just declare a simple for each passing array of movie and the view provider simply declare a v stack and inside the v stack we have the movie dot title as well as movie dot overview okay let me format this properly okay now looks good let's try to render this Bull documentation okay nice we can see this code block is being rendered this nice right now let's add annotation for the public properties for the movie this time i'll show you how you can use uh, xcode 13 quick action to add the annotation so here make sure the xcode window is in focus and hold the common key and hover your cursor on top of the public let keyword here before the id declaration and as you can see it is being highlighted in here and just click on it to open the quick action pop over here and just select add documentation okay this will automatically add the triple forward slashes okay and let's just provide the description let's type unique id of the movie okay let's do the same for the title as well all this command click add documentation and add the description and just type title of the movie eg the godfather a favorite movie of all time and finally for the overview let's do the same all command over to this slide click select a documentation and just type short summary of the story okay now let's try to do the documentation again okay nice as you see here each of the property now have the description 
ID is an integer. Description is unique ID of the movie. Overview is a string. Short summary of the story. You can also click to see the detail in here. Nice, right? Now let's go back to Xcode and navigate to the movie service. Okay. So this is the protocol for the movie store to fetch the movies from the MDB API. And let's add the public modifier for the movie service as well as the movie error enum. Make sure to add the public here in the error using info. And let's also make this movie list endpoint enum as public. Add public var id. Okay. Let's start to build first. Okay, the build succeeded. And now let's add the description for the movie service. Okay. Add documentation and basically let's just type a protocol to retrieve and search movies okay and now let's add annotation to all of these methods using xcode quick action okay the first one this one select the func here and select a documentation okay it's generated the annotation as you can see there are two additional key the parameter and the reference description Let's type the fetch and point for for the description here. And for this first parameter and point, let's just pass instance of using this symbol linking movie list and point. Okay. For the turns description, let's type array of using symbolic in game movie okay now let's try to build the documentation and see the result let's navigate to the uh, click here movie service okay and now it provides the summary and description for the movie service here and also, let me click on this fetch movies from movie list endpoint. Okay, here it shows the description as well and the return value, which is an array of movie instance and the parameters. This is only a single parameter method, the endpoint instance of movie list endpoint. This is very uh, good, right? And let's go back to Xcode editor, right? So you may be wondering, what if the method has multiple parameters? Okay, let's try it. Declare this func sum with one parameter a integer b the second one integer that returns an integer. Okay, let's try to use this quick action as well here to generate the documentation. Okay, so basically the difference is in these parameters here. Now it is plural and each of the parameter will be shown inside this list item A and B. Okay. That is the difference between a method with multiple parameters and single parameter. Okay. Now let's remove this and continue. Now let's uh, navigate to the implementation of the movie service protocol, which is the movie store. Okay. So first let's make this class public also let's make the initializer public and all of these three methods that were required when we confront to this movie service protocol okay okay so all of these three methods are now public and now let's add the summary for the movie store and I'm going just to type retrieve and search movies from TMDB API. Now let's add the documentation to the initializer using the quick action here. Holding the command again. Add documentation. Okay. So uh, it has this uh, 
parameter here containing the API key and let's give it a description of API key provided from so to add link to external website we can use square bracket for the text KMDD API and followed by the parenthesis which we can just fill with the URL go to fill HTTPS and this is just an example the mdb.org okay. and for the description uh, i'm just going to say initialize uh, the movie store passing api key from the mdb api okay let's try to build the documentation now let's see now let's search for the movie store okay retrieve and search movies from the mdb api looks good okay nice here the initializer we have the description initialize the movie store passing apk from the mdb api clicking on this parameters one only one api key api key provided from the mdb api so you can click and navigate the website Okay, and for the instance method, we got this fetch movies from movie list endpoint short summary because this uh, movie store is an inheritance from the movie service that they already provide summary for this method. Okay. Now let's create the documentation for the framework itself. Currently, if I navigate to the XATMDB client root page here. It doesn't show any summary and overview. So to add this, we need to create a documentation catalog for the project. Let's navigate to the project in here. So from the project navigator, select source. Open the project navigator, select these sources, okay, and select this XCA TMDB client folder, and then just right click and select this new file okay this will open the template window just filter for documentation catalog this one click this okay this will create the boxy folder with one markdown file and resources folder so first we need to make sure to rename the doxy folder and the markdown file with the same name as the framework target and rename this to XEA TM DB client. Okay, the name of our framework. And as well as documentation, select, press enter. Okay. And then comment B, XEM TM DB client. Okay, now we have renamed both of these. So let me open the XEA TM DB client but md file here this is basically a markdown file so for the title let's use symbol linking to the module itself okay this one so here just type xa and then let it auto complete xa tmdb client okay and replace the last order summary in here with get the latest movie updates and information from tmdb api okay and now for the overview remove the plus order text and type this framework provides models and service for retrieving movies from tmdb api Let's continue with it uses use the symbol linking movie as a presentation of movie with all of uh, with all related information. Okay. And next, let's add the image to this main page. Okay. So when we created the documentation catalog folder here. 
as code generates this resourcer, resources folder for us, which we can use to put all our image assets. It is recommended by Apple to use add to x scale as the best resolution for an image. Okay. To make the image aware of the dark system theme, we can include image asset for the dark using the same prefix name and appending it with the tilde dark in the file name. And let's just see how it is. Okay, so open the starter folder that you have downloaded. Click on the resources, and here I have this image overview. So this is the for the light. This is just normal, and for the dark, we just append it with this till the dark. Okay, let me select this, all of this, and then let me drop this inside the resources folder here okay now it is included in our package and now below the summary the overview sorry we need to add a reference to our image assets so we need to declare the exclamation mark and then declare the square bracket this will contain the image description of the of our image so, okay so just give this overview and let's open a parenthesis in here and basically just provide the name of the assets and ignore the add to x and the tilde dark okay just overview at png okay the format of this overview is png if it is jpeg you just use jpeg okay and now let me try to build the documentation again. Nice. Now is rendered the main page of the framework. XCA TMDB client. Get the latest movie updates and information from the MDB API. Okay. This framework provides more than surface for retrieving movies from the MDB API. Okay. This is the image. It is currently in dark mode. So it uses the dark uh, asset. Let me change my system theme to light. Okay. Nice. It updated to the light image. And let's revert back to dark. Okay. I think there's some different size between the dark and the light image. So when I switch to light, the image got bigger. Okay. But you got the point, right? So here, when I scroll down, you can see the topics in the section here. Currently, it only contains the public types such as struct, enum, class, and protocols. Okay, let me show you how we can organize this topic section. And let's navigate back to the xcatmdbclient.md here. And as you can see here, we have this H2 for topics, right? To add another topic here inside this topics H2, we simply need to declare an H3 here. It's already declared here. And let me name this group as service. And for the item inside this topic, we need to, we can use the symbol link again. That means let me use this movie store okay as well as its main protocol the movie service okay now let's declare another section in the topic let me declare a using this triple hash on models okay and for the first item i'm going to declare movie second one is movie list and point okay now we have two custom topic here let's try to move the documentation and see the result okay as you can see here now it is grouped properly we have the models it contains the movie struct as well as the movie list and point and we have the surface which is the movie store and movie service okay also in the sidebar the navigation also got updated with our new groups as you can see here 
If you notice, we don't have protocol sections anymore, as they are already being referenced in the service uh, group, right? The animation group also only contains the movie error now, right? Because the movie list endpoint is already referenced in the modules group. You can take a look at the Apple sample project uh, named Slot Creator. And uh, I believe the topics are very well organized inside the project. Next, let's create an article for our framework that provides information on how to fetch movies from the MDB API. And uh, let's navigate back to export. Select on the Axia MDB client doxy folder here and right click, select new file, filter, type article, select this article file, okay. Give it a name of fetching hyphen movies. Okay, this basically create a markdown file again. And let's change the H1 to getting started with movie store. For the summary, let's type fetch and search movies from TMDB API. Okay. In the overview, let's type with movie store. You can fetch list of movies based on let's use symbol linking movie list endpoint. Okay. It's movie store. Let's just also use symbol linking. Okay. H2 in here under topic. Sorry, H2, and then give it a name of fetching list of movies from an endpoint. Okay, the paragraph type uh, to fetch list of movies, you need to pass movie list endpoint instance to the. So I want to use the movie store fetch movies method symbol linking to do that i need to use this movie store class and then use this slash it will give me all the method i'm going to use this fetch movies from endpoint okay and let's add a code block now detailing the code on how to do this swift the language close this and just provide information switch to an async task if you are in sync context because this method is an asynchronous method using async wait we need to switch to the async context using this task okay and this is also throwing so let's use this do try catch the catch let's just print the error and in the do let's assign it to a constant that now playing movies we need to use await and movie store dot fetch movies passing now playing case movie list and point in them so with this, the users should be able just to copy and pass into their own project, right? And that's basically it for this article. Now let's try to build the documentation. Okay, as you can see here, the main page. Now it has this article section here with the article getting started with movie store. Fetch and search movies from the MDB API. Let me click. Nice, it says fully navigate, showing this is an article. Getting started with movie store. Fetch and search movies from the MDB API. This is the code block that the user can just copy and paste. This is nice. And let me show you how we can put this inside a group in the main page here. So basically, I want to create another group in here named essentials i want to put all the articles for this framework here so how can i link that article page article document 
So to do that, we can use this doc here. And then basically it will provide the suggestion, dispatching movies article. And yeah, with this we can basically link another article inside a inside this markdown file. Okay. Now let's try to build again. Okay. As you can see now the in the main page we don't have the article section anymore and it is it is replaced by this essentials here getting started with movie store nice right and basically you can create any article to explain a context in your framework documentation for the user to understand in detail okay for the final hands-on on this doxy tutorial let's create an extension documentation for our type so basically we can create an extension markdown file for any public type so for example here this movie.swift so instead of annotating the type for the summary and overview inside the source code we can move it to this extension file so our source code doesn't get to convoluted with all of this documentation okay so to do that as always select this xctmdb client docx folder Select new file, open this template again, and filter by typing extension, extension file, click this, and make sure the name is same here with the type, movie, okay. And for the symbol, this is also important, we need to use movie, okay. So it cannot find movie directly, so we need to use this xmdb client slash movie. And for the, we need to move this out basically. Let me cut this for the summary. Okay. And let me cut this and remove all the annotations. Go back here and pass this inside the overview. Okay. Looks good. Now let's try to build this, okay. build the documentation, product, build documentation, open this movie struct. Okay, so as you can see here, we have the same documentation with the summary and overview. Okay. And also we can just also Create a group to link to the article on how to fetch the movie. Let's say fetching movies from movie store. Okay. Let's just use the same doxy doc fetching movies here. And real documentation here. As you can see in this movie struct, we have this topic that links to this article page. Nice. So that's basically it for this hands-on tutorial on Doxy. I hope with this, you should be able to understand all the basics for creating code reference and article documentation. Okay. For the next task, let's create the Doxy archive file from the documentation. So with this, you can share this Doxy archive file with the other developers. And when they click this, it will open import it to their Excel documentation. Also, this Doxy archive can be hosted on website, but to be able to do this, you need to customize the server routing configuration file, which I believe is quite complex to do it for most of the iOS developers, right? So most people just prefer to use the static hosting, such as GitHub page, or maybe Firebase hosting, which they can just generate the static files and then upload them with doing any server root configuration so we'll be using github pages for this letter so there are basically two ways to export the documentation to doxy archive first is using the export button in the xcode documentation this is very simple and the second one is the using command line xcode build doc build 
So let me show you the first one. So actually it is very easy. From the Xcode documentation itself, just select the framework and then just right click in here. And it has this export option that you can click. And basically you just pick your the directory that you want to save this as well as providing the name here. And then just click export. It will just generate this doxy archive file. Okay. Next, we'll explore using the command line. This is preferred as you can automate the process and include this into your CI CD pipeline. For example, when a call is merged or pushed into a branch, we can trigger the process to generate the doxy archive, generate the static hosting file, and then upload it to the static hosting site. So let's try this open terminal. Just navigate to the project directory. In my example, I put it in desktop. Actually, MDB client. Okay, this is my project directory. So basically, in here, we can just type Xcode build doc build. Okay, we need to pass several argument flag in here. So let me make this multiple line. The first one is scheme. Okay, so this is basically the name of our target which is xea pm db client okay let's add another line the second one is the derived data path okay and this is where the build files are generated this will contain the doxy archive as well so here let me pass this is my users root and then desktop and I'm going to give the name of the build folder to xatmdb client build. Okay. And let's add another argument flag. Move to the next line. And finally, we need to pass the destination. Okay. Which is the platform we want to build this. So let's open this with the, this quotation. Okay. And then pass platform which is iOS simulator okay. and the name of the simulator is I'm going to use iPhone 13 okay now let me just enter and see the output okay as you can see it generates the symbol graph here and scroll down okay as you can see here, the build documentation succeeded, right? Now we need to find the, we have this xatmdb client build, but there are so many things inside this derived data folder. So basically we can use this command to find the doxy archive inside that folder. So let's type find and pass the folder desktop xea pmdb client pl this is the drive data folder content doxy archive and pass this flag type d okay and then name and then quote this use this uh, star wheel card doxy archive okay so this will find the doxy archive inside this folder Okay, tap enter. As you can see, the location is this inside the build products the bug iPhone simulator. Okay, let's open this. Let's copy and type open. Paste this. Actually, I don't want to open the doxy archive. I want to open this folder and copy the doxy archive file. Okay, here it is. Just comment C. I'm going to pass this in desktop okay we're going to use this to generate the static hosting files next okay so you don't need to worry about all of this syntax i will provide a github gist link containing the snippet of all of this uh command line invocation for you to just copy and pass in your project okay okay now for the final task we're going to upload this documentation to the static hosting site for all the internet to access. So I'm going to use GitHub pages for this. Let's open Safari. 
here I already opened my GitHub page. Let me add a new repository. Okay. For the repository name, I'm going to give it a name of SCA PMDB client. Okay. For the description, basically I'm going to say uh, Swift PMDB API client. I'm going to make this public for all of you to access. And I'm just going to ignore this. Just click create repository. Okay, so first I will need to create the initialization of Git here inside my project using Git init. Okay, so I'm I have set to use main as my default branch instead of master. And for this example, I'm just going to auth add all the source files. Okay, I recommend you to use git ignore to require some of the generated files so you don't have to upload them to your repository. Okay. But to make this quick, let's just add all the files and commit. Initial commit. Okay. So I have my local git in here with the first commit. Now let me add this. Push an existing repository from the command line. Copy this. Paste. Enter. And I just need to push it. Okay. Git push origin main. Okay, it is pushed to the repository. Command R. Okay, let's see my repository here. It is created. Nice. And now let's open the settings here to set up the GitHub page. Select pages from the sidebar. Okay. And for the source, select main branch. And for the folder that the GitHub will use to upload to the GitHub pages, I'm going to use this docs folder. So we're going to create a docs folder later in our local repository and put all the static hosting site files there. Now save. Okay. So your site is ready to be published at this location, right? Now, uh, we, we, we need to upload the docs folder on the new static hosting site files. Okay. Next, we need to run the doxy to process the archive and convert to static hosting files from the command line. So as far as I know, currently there is no Xcode build command to generate static hosting files for doxy archive. And you can try to call the doxy from its repo, build and run, but actually we don't need to do it as Scott 13.3 also has its own doxy to generate the doxy archive. We just need to find it and invoke it from the command line. But first, you need to make sure you are using Scott 13.3 beta as your default command line tool. So basically, just go to these preferences, select locations here, and make sure this command line tools is Scott 13.3. This will be used inside this terminal. Okay, now let's clear this and the command is a quite bit complicated. First, we need to find the doxy inside the Xcode. Let's declare this dollar sign first and XC run and this double dash find doc okay. Close the parenthesis. Okay, this will find the doxy inside the Xcode 13.3. And now we can invoke the command for the doxy. It has this subcommand of process archive. Okay. And let's move to the second line. The we need to pass this argument transform dash Hyphen for static hyphen hosting, and we need to pass the doxy archive location the file. So I already put that in the desktop here. Desktop and xca tmdb client doxy archive. Okay, and let's move to the underline. Pass the 
additional argument we need to pass this use this double again slash output on path and we need to pass the directory that will be containing the static hosting files in this case i'm going to put it in desktop okay docs folder okay let's move in to the final argument in this case i'm going to pass this slash hosting open dash open path so for the hosting best path okay so basically if you take a look in here when you uh, use github page there is an additional best path right so this is actually the name of your repository right so basically we need to for the github page right because it has this best path we need to pass this okay so in this example my repo name is xia team db client you my your your one may be different so i'm going to use this i'm going to copy this okay as the hosting best path and pass this okay remove the that uh, slash so I think if your static hosting page doesn't have this best path, you don't need to pass this. But I'm not sure. Okay, I just try this for GitHub pages that has this best path. Okay, now let me enter. And let's navigate back to desktop here. And alas, okay, as you can see, we have the docs. Alas. And this is all the files that it's generated. We have all the CSS, the HTML, the documentation folder, and that's it. Now we just need to upload this. So let me just copy this, okay? Copy this folder. And let me just open the my local git here, setting UB client, and then pass this docs folder. Okay, let's go back to the XCL DB client here in terminal and git status. As you can see, we have the untracked files docs. Let me add that and let me commit add docs for GitHub pages. Okay, now we just need to push this. The post successful. Let's wait a bit, uh, like five or ten seconds. Okay, now let's open this. Okay, as you can see here, this is still saying four or four, right? So basically, to open the documentation, we cannot just use this. Basically, we need to pen documentation to the path documentation and passing the name of our framework in this case it's going to be xia tm db client notice this is like still uh, all of these are lower cases so it will ignore all the capital cases actually the upper case let me enter nice as you can see we have successfully uploaded this documentation to a static hosting site right as simple as just uploading docs folder everything works in here we can change the theme like dark auto matching the system theme congratulations for completing this hands-on tutorial with doxy we can create rich documentation for a safe library containing all the code reference and articles this is the same tool that apple uses to build their documentation it is amazing right Actually, there is one other feature which is interactive tutorial, just like Apple's Steve UI tutorial on the web. Let's explore that on another video. To conclude, always let's keep on being a lifelong learner, stay safe and healthy, see you on the next one. Goodbye.